Stock trading is so easy that 10-year-olds can do it profitably. I honestly never thought I would have to say that phrase in my life, but the last four or five months have been batshit crazy, and we just keep getting crazier. So, these stories are coming out about who is actually profiting from all these stock trades, besides Davey, Day Trader Global, Dave Portnoy. And by the way, if you've seen the Dave Portnoy, the new Dave Portnoy video that he just released on his Twitter, it is absolutely bonkers. It's only about a minute 42 seconds, and he actually did meme. He put Warren Buffett's head, a cartoon Warren Buffett head, on someone else who was shitting themselves. So, this is the new normal, folks. This is the craziness. George Gammon has talked about how the stock market is designed to make the largest amount of people lose the most amount of money possible over time. But for now, we have just an insane level of day trading. Very reminiscent. Uh, Jim Bianco of Bianco Research says it's actually even crazier now than the technology bubble. And there's the companies like Nikola, with the, the truck company that copied Tesla. And then we have the first, world's first ever, which I've been in finance for almost 15 years now, the world's first ever initial bankruptcy offering from Hertz, which some people are saying the, the equity of a bankrupt company is actually a out-of-the-money call option. So just freaking insane. So easy, the, the riff, remember the Geico commercial, so easy a caveman can do it? Well, now stock trading apparently is so easy that a 10-year-old can quit video games, talk to their friends in their Discord chat group, and do it at a profit, for now. But at some point, this will end in tears. Hopefully, some of those traders are taking profits. Because on Thursday, we had a pretty large crash in the Dow. It was one of the four largest crashes ever. I think it dropped 1,800, four or five largest crashes ever dropped in a single day. It dropped 1,800 points. Okay, so let me get into this, this article here from Zero Hedge. And by the way, congratulations to Zero Hedge. As of two about two hours ago, at about 9.46 p.m., Twitter let them out of prison. Zero Hedge is back on Twitter. Now, they don't have like the 700,000 Twitter followers again yet, but they are back. So congratulations to Zero Hedge on being back on Twitter, and the craziness is only going to get more interesting. Fortnite is missing 10-year-old players. They are day trading on Robinhood instead. On Wednesday, we published a remarkable chart from Jesse Felder showing that in the past few weeks, Google search queries for, quote, day trading and, quote, call option. My God, these kids are looking up call option. These teenagers, they're not even teenagers yet. They're looking up call options. Had exploded these, these hedge fund managers that are charging 2% of assets under management, 20% of profits. You know, if they're underperforming, they're going to lose their jobs. Maybe even to these kids. Had exploded to all-time highs. Some of them might. Uh, had exploded to all of these unhedged, over-leveraged hedge fund managers. A lot of them are mediocre. Met some of them. They're not very good. Had exploded to all-time highs, as most of them are just boring mainstream Keynesians. Uh... uh and trend followers as retail day traders flooded into the can't lose market. Uh, the, the chart's insane. You could see it there on your screen, the Google search chart, and it's just spiked up over. Let me zoom in here. It's spiked up a lot in the last two months, just gone exponential. The Google search trends for day trading and call options and Robinhood. Robinhood also spiking up like crazy. All of this was not lost on Hertz and Jeffries, who, as we reported overnight, are now hoping to piggyback on this day trading euphoria to sell up to a $1 billion of effectively worthless to these same momentum chasing addicts. But who are these furious dip buyers who will soon be responsible for a new financial product, the initial bankruptcy offering? Did you see there's like a new satire handle on Twitter? It's like Hertz bankruptcy offering uh, marketing, something like that. I'll... I retweeted a couple of their tweets if you follow me on Twitter in the last few hours. So it's it's there. It's a new satire account making fun of the Hertz initial bankruptcy offering. They're apparently joking about mark it, it being marketing marketed. While conventional wisdom defies the typical Robin Hood trader as a bored, unemployed from home millennial or Generation Zer, the anecdotal reality is even more bizarre. As former Goldman partner Joseph Mauro writes on Twitter, his 10-year-old son can't find Fortnite players as they have migrated over to Robin Hood to trade stocks. My son just told me that he can only play Fortnite in the evening because half of his normal group of players or his squad started trading stocks. He is only 10 years old. In another tweet here, 
about uh, Sun. Okay, this is an another guy tweeting about his son. Sun just told me his friends were buying Hertz and Chesapeake Energy. They're 12 years old. So George Contos, I don't know who George Contos is, telling him to get in on it. Needless to say, we had a nice chat about a few things. Of course, all of this is, I, I'm reading a few screenshots of the tweet from the article. Of course, all of this is likely tongue-in-cheek, but the fact that Hertz stock rose nearly 100% on the news, the company would sell worthless stock to retail bag, hold, bag holders. I, I can't keep a straight face. This is just laughable about the initial bankruptcy offering and and so selling a billion dollars in equity of a worthless company, the Securities and Exchange Commission at this point, I mean, they let, if you want to see how inept the Securities and Exchange Commission is, go and watch the movie The Big Short. They make fun of them in there. If you really want to see how inept the Securities and Exchange Commission is, besides what they allowed Elon Musk to get away with again and again and again and again, go read Harry Marco Polos's book. It's available on Audible audiobook. No one would listen. And he gave them, he gave Jim Cramer, he gave Ben Stein, he gave other members of the mainstream financial media mount copies of mountains of evidence that Bernie Madoff was running a Ponzi scheme. And these, the Securities and Exchange Commission, they didn't have enough, they had too many lawyers, first of all. They didn't have enough accounting experts. They didn't have enough uh, stock traders. People actually understood markets. And he was trying to explain to them that it was not possible for Bernie Madoff to claim the options trading strategy because there wasn't enough split strike conversions to do the options trade. He said, all you have to do to prove the fraud, you only need 10 minutes. You just have to go look at the trade tickets. It's not mathematically possible for him to do those options trades and to collect those premiums because there wasn't that many options to sell. He was selling some options. I think he was selling calls and buying puts. It was like a split strike conversion. It was a hedging strategy to collect premiums. And he had guaranteed 10% return. And the Securities and Exchange Commission, despite a mountain of evidence from Harry Marco Polos for basically 10 years before Madoff, the Madoff Ponzi scheme blew up, they still couldn't bust Madoff. So it's not just the Securities and Exchange Commission. It is all the government agencies. I don't want to go off on a rant about the government agencies. Stick to this topic here for now. Otherwise, I'm going to get too angry and we're going to go a long time about all the corruption in all the different federal government agencies. And as I was bringing up to the Tesla charts guy and other people who are complaining that the Securities and Exchange Commission, that the Trump appointee won't stop this uh, Hertz initial bankruptcy offering by the creditors, you know, this billion dollars that is going to be raised, that's going forward for this initial bankruptcy offering, the equity, this is nothing, a rounding error compared to the accounting fraud, the failed audits that occurs from the Pentagon and the military industrial complex on a daily basis, every day, every week, every month, for many years, for decades. So let that sink in. The real, the real fraud, the real theft, the real fraud on Wall Street, military industrial complex, but there is insane amounts of theft and fraud and grossly overpaid federal government employees who are unqualified. A lot of them are unqualified for their job. They should have never gotten their job in their first place. Some of them don't even have 20% of their job requirements and they still are getting paid $65,000 or more. Cushy, ret cushy retirement plans, cushy healthcare plans. Okay, I'll end the rant there. Anyway, so back to this article. Of course, all of this is likely tongue in cheek. Fact that Hertz sold $1 billion merely confirms that while day traders may have made money chasing momentum, when it comes to even modestly complex situations, things get scary. In any case, here is Michael Every's take on this absurdity. There is a great deal of nonsense on Twitter now more than ever, but the odd gem too. One of the latter, I believe, describes at least part of how the market got to the stage where it could fall so precipitously. A parent was complaining that half of their son's Fortnite gaming companions were no longer joining his squad because they were all day trading on a certain online platform associated with merry men instead. The boy in question is 10. Now, this is entirely anecdotal, but seasoned professionals and journeymen will admit that the general level of market ridiculousness seen around us certainly fits that anecdote. That's because a lot of people are buying up either bankrupt or near bankrupt companies or companies that have so much debt and no cash flow. So a couple months from now, if the earnings don't improve, if cash flow doesn't come back, it's going to end in tears. If these traders did not take profits, did not do hedging strategies, did not do proper risk management, did not do proper defensive trading strategies, which I've talked about for my Patreon account customers, for my Patreon account contributors, excuse me, 
for the last couple months in different articles. To use Fortnite terminology for anyone reading high day trading 10 year old, what just happened is not a bug in our system, it is a feature. His conclusion with investors like this, there is no way Hertz will not be able to pull off its new equity offering in a market so silly it hurts. I, I gotta stop reading, it's just so ridiculous. Okay, so also Bloomberg ran an article today, June 12th, on Dave Portnoy, Barstool Sports. Barstool Sports says Dave Portnoy is leading an army of day traders. He disses Warren Buffett, touts stocks to legion of Twitter followers. Thursday's stock market route offers reminder that stock prices can fall, even though Dave Portnoy has said they basically will not. Barstool Sports' says Dave Portnoy has bought just one stock in his life before the quarantine hit when the country shut down in March, canceling sports and sports betting, which is the majority of his business because he also does fantasy sports too on, Barst on Barstool Sports. Barstool Sports is like a mix of sports coverage, fantasy sports coverage, um, boobs, beer, uh, opinion on sports, and lifestyle. So it's kind of frat bro. It's very politically incorrect culture. And nowadays, you know, he's being called all kinds of names. You know, 10, 15 years ago, it was more accepted, let's just say. Okay, when the country shut down in March, canceling sports and sports betting, founder of the Brash Media Empire, uh, they, of course, here's the politically correct, yeah, they labeled them sexist stuff by some dusted off his old E-Trade account, started trading day trading. With the volatility, it is kind of like watching a sports game, said Portnoy43. <clears throat> Said Portnoy 43, who started live streaming as Davy Day Trader Global. You know, it's saying he it's saying he has clients now. Did he actually register to be an investment advisor? To his 1.5 million Twitter followers, with the caveat, I'm not a financial advisor, don't trust anything I say about stocks. Then why in the newest video is it saying that he has customers and clients now? Anyways, I guess he he can afford to pay the regulators, he can afford to pay the lawyers to to be in compliance. Probably just skip that though. Despite the obligatory warning, Portnoy has touted stocks like Inspire MD and Smith and Wesson, the guns company, while dissing the acumen of Warren Buffett, the world's fifth richest person and widely regarded as one of the greatest investors ever. He also made that meme on the video that I talked about. Uh, well, he, he made that Warren Buffett meme a few hours ago that he released on his Twitter. It's got almost a million views, I think, on his uh, Twitter account. I'm sure Warren Buffett is a great guy, but when it comes to stocks, he's washed up. Portnoy tweeted Tuesday, I'm the captain now. <laughs> when I saw that on video, it was, he is funny. He is a brilliant marketer. It cost him almost no money. Very little time, almost no money to make that, that short little meme video. And it's going viral. Now, Warren Buffett may sue him for defamation and he may have to take that down, but that's still like viral marketing. Portnoy and his ilk have been part of one of the greatest stock market rallies in history, adopting as a mantra the online slogan of, quote, stocks only go up. You know, normally this type of behavior, what we see out of Dave Portnoy and David Day Trader Global and this attitude and 10-year-olds, and 12-year-olds who are day trading and making profits compared to a lot of professional investors, normally in the past, this was a contrarian indicator that the stock market was getting ready for to roll over getting crash at least in the past who knows now with what the central banks are going to do apparently some of these younger kids when they're citing why they're buying stocks besides listening to people like in their chat groups on discord and dave portnoy they're also citing uh btfd which is buy the fucking dip and then also they're talking about the fed how the fed has their back the fed will force stocks higher <laughs> My God. Oh, I, I have almost 200 people watching and almost no likes. Please tap or smash the like button. That time I actually remembered two of them. Okay, stocks only go up. Despite Thursday's route, the deepest in three months offered a reminder that stocks do, in fact, fall, though equities rebounded in trading on Friday. Millennials and Generation Zs, the target audience of Barstool content, have long been underinvested in the stock market, said Jul Julian Emanuel, chief equity and derivative strategist at BTIG LLC, probably because they don't have any savings. A lot of them don't even have full-time jobs, especially right now. And some of them who do have jobs, they have two or three jobs. They have student loan debt. Some of them have car payments. Some of them don't ha can't afford to have a car. So there's tons and tons of articles about people who are in my age demographic or younger who don't have a lot of savings and are in debt up to their eyeballs. So of course, these younger kids are going to be, younger adults are going to be underinvested. They don't have capital. They don't, savings is capital. 
So if I use capital and savings, it's interchangeable. At least in the past it was. Although now at this point, who knows? In order to be a capitalist in the past, you used to have, have to do capital accumulate. Used to have to save and have capital capital accumulation. Why well, I screwed that up? Probably in this live stream show in a couple of minutes if I'm stumbling that bad. It is almost midnight though. That's changing. Stuck at home with plenty of free time. Government stimulus checks. No sports to bet on. And for better or worse, a figure like Dave Portnoy turning investing into stock trading. Let's not call this investing. This is gambling or stock trading or speculating. Into entertainment, more and more young people are waiting in for the first time. Investing is long-term investing, finding a company that can grow revenues, grow earnings, free cash flow, maintain margins, grow margins, expand margins, eventually pay dividends. That's investing is more long-term like what George Gammon talks about. What is happening now? With the stock market rally, this is not investing. This is, and, and if anyone's made profits, this is profitable trading, profitable speculating. Not investing, really. Okay, perfect storm. It has really been a perfect storm, said Nate Geraci, president of investment advisory firm, the ETF store, who views Portnoy as a millennial Jim Cramer. Oh, I don't like, <laughs> uh, I wouldn't want to be called Jim Cramer. The CNBC, uh, called uh, anything like Jim Cramer, the CNBC personality. Investors are seeing firsthand the thrill of victory, the agony of defeat, and he's doing it with large sums of money. So I think for younger investors, that's really enticing. In January, casino company Penn National Gaming announced it had bought a stake in Barstool for $163 million in cash and stock. Portnoy, who estimates his net worth at more than $100 million, said he's put $5 million into his day trading account so far. Quote, I'm a little surprised that it's become pretty well known within the financial community. A, a little surprised. I mean, he's marketing. He has over a million Twitter followers and he's making these videos and he's making these bold, aud audacious claims. How is he surprised that he's becoming this popular? He's calling like a lot of the, the larger financial FinTwit accounts, financial Twitter accounts out on Twitter too. anyone who disagrees with him. It's, it's pretty funny him trolling. Okay, fine. I won't read the rest of the article. If you want to read it, it'll be in the information and description section. Finally, people are going to want to know, and I get asked this a lot, uh, a lot, what are the top stocks on Robinhood? So there is a website that is free for now. Who knows if they will start charging? It is robintrack.net. So robintrack.net, I will put the link to it, the URL in the information and description section. And it is a website that keeps track of how many Robinhood users hold a particular stock over time. It generates charts showing the relationship between price and popularity of the stock on Robinhood on the Robinhood trading app and compiles some lists using the data. And then it also has a leaderboard. It has a list of the most popularly held stocks on Robinhood and the least popular. And then it has a few other data categories. So some of the most popular stocks on the Robinhood app now are Ford, which their credit just got downgraded. Ford's the top stock right now. Ford's credit just got downgraded to junk in the last couple months, and they don't have any cash flows back yet, but maybe the government will do a bailout, or maybe the government will offer a new cash for clunkers pro program. General Electric is the second highest, highest owned stock. General Electric just announced, their CEO did in the last like 10 days, that they have an enormous cash flow problem and that their jet engine orders over the last their jet engine orders have collapsed and that it's going to take a couple years for their jet engine orders to come back. The problem with that is General Electric has a very highly leveraged balance sheet. Two years ago, General Electric, when their credit rating was downgraded in 2018, that was the Christmas Eve massacre when Steve Mnuchin had to issue a press release and they had to manipulate the stock market. So the stock market almost crashed with General Electric having financial problems in November and December 2018. So General Electric has been slogging along for a while, but they have they have a really leveraged balance sheet with a lot of debt. They've done a ton of financial engineering. Jack Welch started it. Harry Marco Polos last year from who I talked about earlier, he's the Madoff whistleblower. I think he's a man of integrity. I, I did not look at all the details of the fraud allegations and accounting fraud that he was alleging in the General Electric report last year, but Jack Welch and Jeff Immelt were even worse. Jeff Immelt was one of the worst financial engineering CEOs. I mean, there was a ton of red flags when he was CEO of GE. 
and he was paying himself exorbitant sums of money, enormous amounts of lobbyists here in D.C., enormous amounts of tax attorneys. At one point, General Electric had so many lobbyists and they were getting, doing so many alternative energy projects that they were actually getting a tax rebate. So they were getting billions a year in tax rebates. They weren't even paying any taxes. So General Electric is the number two company, must be betting on a bailout because General Electric just, just did a cash flow warning. And I've told my, on, on the free podcast here, I've told my Wall Street from Main Street listeners, when a company warns about going uh, dropping cash flows, cash flow negative, with a lot of debt on the balance sheet, it's a ticking time. It's only a matter of time before the company is going to go bankrupt. So General Electric is in a lot of trouble right now, and but they do have a lot of businesses that are connected to the government. So they did get a bailout with Warren Buffett and the government because of uh, GE, AV, GE Aviation and GE Capital in 2008. Buffett came in, got preferred shares and some other sweetheart deals. Let's see here. AAL, American Airlines. So I guess that's... Another bailout company, airline industries bailed out. What's the fourth one? Disney. The list is here. I'll put, you can take a look at the list later. I'll put it in the information and description section. Just insane. Welcome to Dystopia, where the teenager, or not even preteens, preteens and teenagers are out trading the uh, financial professionals and the hedge fund managers, some of them anyway, the last couple of months. How long can this last? I don't know. But normally, historically, maybe it's a month, maybe it's two or three months, maybe it's a little bit longer than that or six months. But if the earnings are not good, this is going to end in tears. And George Gammon has been talking about this as well. The stock market, again, normally the stock market is very good at helping a lot, the most amount of people lose the most amount of money. So most people do not do well in the stock market over the long run, and a lot of it's because they do a lot of dumb trades. Jonathan wants to ask, how do you get a job at the SEC? Do you have a law degree from an Ivy League school? If you have if you have an undergraduate degree from an Ivy League school and a law degree from an Ivy League school, you can go to the SEC because they have tons of Harvard, Princeton, and Yales. But just because that those paper degrees look good does not mean that they can actually read financial statements or have market experience with options trading, like how Harry Marco Polos was trying to explain on a whiteboard similar to what George Gammon does on all of his videos to the people at the SEC how the Madoff Ponzi scheme worked. And he spent, you know, a good amount of time and they still couldn't figure it out. Gary says Robin Hood people will be less than broke soon. Yeah, especially if they borrowed if they borrowed on their parents' credit cards. They may have borrowed on their parents' credit cards. We don't know. I don't know anyone tracking this data. But I suspect that now the trading algorithms, the high frequency trading algorithms are starting if the stock market continues in an uptrend, they're going to start pushing leverage. They're going to start increasing the margin debt again. Dollar index has rallied back over 97. VIX is down a little bit, but has rallied over the last week or so. And that's pretty much it for the short live stream show. So I don't see any super chats here. I want to thank everyone for listening. Thank you very much to my over a thousand Patreon account contributors. There is a lot of research behind the paywall. There was a new article on the airline stock ETF in the last couple days. There's articles over the last week or two about um, Newmont Mining, the gold, large gold miner, also Barrick Gold. And in the past, I have a lot of articles about the oil market, about silver miners. There's a lot of stuff behind the paywall. A lot of technical analysis charts. There was also recently another uh, technical analysis chart about the dollar index too which I think the dollar index is still in a tug of war. It's just bouncing around. The dollar index is just bouncing around in a trading range. Money printer go burr. Oh, did you, did you, yeah, there's a lot of Sandstorm Gold articles behind the paywall. Also Franco Nevada. There's a lot of Franco Nevada articles behind the paywall too. Okay, well, I want to thank my over 1,000 Patreon account contributors. It is only 5 bucks a month, the price of a 
mediocre to bad cup of coffee to take a look behind the paywall for the content. Thank you very much to my monthly PayPal contributors. I think there's still a few left. And I also accept crypto donations. If you want to tip me, there's six cryptocurrency address links, crypto wallet links um, in the information and description section below this video after it's over. So the craziness will continue. Congratulations on Zero Hedge Twitter coming back. And if you want some laughs, take a look at the meme I, pu I put on um, my YouTube channel on the community section tab there. Oh, shoot. I just totally, like, blanked out on which meme I... <laughs> this has been a crazy last couple hours. I just totally forgot about the meme. Anyway, there's a really funny meme there. I put a couple hours... Oh, it's Jerome Powell smoking a cigarette. Talking about money printer go burr. So I put a funny Jerome Powell meme, money printer go burr, that I saw somewhere else. And definitely take a look. If you want some laughs and you have a... Let's see, National Lampoon's sense of humor a politically incorrect sense of humor, I think you will laugh at the new Dave Portnoy video that's under two minutes. If you do not have a politically incorrect sense of humor, do not watch that video. It is not safe for kids.